All right, good morning. I'm Chuck Darnell, and I did my smart growth audit on Undergrowth Heights, Minnesota. Undergrowth Heights was established in 1853. It's located about 10 miles south of St. Paul. It's in uh, northern Dakota County, as you can see in the red here. And its eastern border is made up of the Mississippi River. Um, I put up the population and employment numbers here. Um, as you can see, they've seen pretty tremendous growth for the, for the past few decades, and the growth is expected to increase. Uh, up to 2030. The numbers for 2020 and 2030 are the city's projections. Um, there's expected to be a 39% increase in population from 2010 to 2030 and a 49% increase in climate over the same time period. Um, another interesting fact is that their largest employer is an oil refinery, which is located on the south um, border of the city. And it's actually the 14th largest oil refinery in the country, so it really presents some unique challenges for the city. Uh, the Met Council has designated Inver Grove Heights in two different areas. Uh, the north half is the developing area and the south is rural residential. And the city has kind of gone with these designations and created planning areas for growth phasing. Um, it's kind of blurry here, but the uh, dark brown is the established development area. Uh, the light, lighter brown is the um, future development area where they want the majority of their growth to occur. And the uh, lower part is rural development, which kind of coincides with the rural residential. Um, so their, their strengths, smart growth strengths, is um, inward, inward direction of growth, um, kind of going off the growth phasing plan that they have. Um, and they've also updated their land use plan. Um, here on the left is the existing, and on the right is the um, 2030 future land use plan. Uh, the purple and pink are some um, the mixed use areas that they're planning to uh, create, and they're also increasing a lot of their multifamily housing zoning areas. Um, you can see the black lines there kind of designate where the MUSA line is going to be extended to and the rural residential there, there won't be any um, expand, there's no plans to expand the sewer lines up to there so that's the way they're kind of encouraging growth in the other areas of the city. Uh, they also have small area plans that they are trying to focus their um, their growth towards. The one on the left is the Concord Boulevard small area plan. Uh, they're trying to focus growth on transportation corridors. And this here is the northwest area. It's that northwest quarter of the city where the majority of their growth will be directed. Um, they've also, they also do well with open space. They have a pretty big park network, and it's um, spread throughout the city, so it's pretty accessible to all of the residents. Um, the Mississippi River makes up the eastern border of the city, so they have a lot of environmental policies directed at that. And it's a, it's a regional park, so it's a pretty good asset for the city. Um, also, with the refinery on the south, it's the gray area here in the bottom. Um, and they have these open areas here, and then this is the same area on the 2030 plan. They've designated as a buffer area just for open space between the refinery and the, um, and the residential area. So uh, they are providing more open space because of that. Um, housing is another strength of the city. They have worked with uh, Dakota County to complete a housing needs assessment, and they've also worked uh, to meet the goals for affordable housing that are set by the Met Council. I think it's about 800 more units that they plan on developing by 2030 uh, for affordable housing units. And they are increasing their multifamily and their senior housing to um, increase the housing options within the city. Another strength is regionalism and intergovernmental inter relations. Um, I mentioned that they work with the Dakota County and the Met Council. Um, they also work a lot with the neighboring municipalities, um, specifically on the, the Mississippi River Park, because it's a regional park. They kind of work with the uh, neighboring communities of Lake West St. Paul, Rosemount, and St. Or St. Paul Park. Um, some of their weaknesses, uh, the main one I think is the treatment of the rural residential areas. Uh, they, they, the minimum lot sizes there are 1.75 and 2.5 acres, and it really isn't large enough to um, allow like farming or, or agricultural use, but they're not really doing anything to discourage future um, residential sprawl in that area. Uh, transportation is also a weakness. They have uh, pretty uh, hierarchical streets and criminal narrow streets in most of the areas. Uh, there isn't a whole lot of transit. They want to plan for more, but um, that could be improved as well. And parking is another thing that's pretty um, inefficient and similar to a lot of other suburban areas. It's kind of resulted in an overabundance of parking, uh, especially in like the commercial areas along the transportation corridors. 
So my re uh, recommendations, the first thing is to change land use regulations in the rural residential areas. Um, they could also set official energy conservation goals. Um, they have some policies directed at energy conservation, but they haven't set them citywide. They're mainly focused on the Mississippi River and uh, the refinery in the south. Um, their minimum lot sizes could be decreased in some of the areas uh, of the south, and especially um, and also in the new and northwest area where the majority of their growth will occur. Um, they can establish more multimodal transportation options. Uh, they, right now they require new developments to have sidewalks on one side of the street, but they can expand that to both sides. Um, and also work more to uh, bring transit through the community. Um, they could offer incentives in their PUDs to increase the mixture of jobs and housing. Uh, they have um, they have a goal of one to one for uh, jobs housing balance, but currently they're at about 0.5, so they're pretty far away from making that. Um, and also, they could provide analyses of uh, the vacant land that's available for infill and um, the housing square footage that's possible for redevelopment, uh, especially since they are creating this northwest area where they want the majority of their infill development to occur. So I think that could be helpful. Um, and then, like like a lot of other cities in the, the region, I think that they really need to work to coordinate the actual practices and zoning ordinances on the ground with the vision that they've created in their comprehensive plan. So that's it. Any questions? Yeah. It was noticeable that obviously um, the employment is growing a lot. Other than the oil refinery, are there any sectors that are present? Um, I don't know exactly, but. Uh, they have large commercial areas um, in the red, and yeah, there's the, the I think the oil refinery was about 2,000 employees, which was a pretty significant portion. So, okay. yeah, it's all <coughs> in the rural areas. Mm -hmm. Is all that land privately owned, or, or is there yeah. any chance that they could? develop some more parks or trails or uh, more kind of kidney. Yeah, that was something I thought they could improve because they do have a few parks in that area, but a majority of it is uh, like large residential lots. So instead of continuing to allow that to occur, uh, they're kind of discouraging it, they say, by not extending sewer lines, but they're not really doing anything to stop that. So I think the white vacant that, on the left hand? Yeah, that's vacant, and they're planning to use it at, in 2030. Right here is that um, open open space buffer between the refinery and the residential uses. So that will be open space. Um, but yeah, I think that they could possibly do something to preserve more open space instead of continuing to allow um, large residential lots. <laughs> yeah. Would you characterize it as walkable? Um, some of the older parts, the, the single family residential in the northern area is um, developed longer ago. I think that has a bit more of a strict pattern, but overall, no, I think it's pretty unlawful, I would say. Yeah. I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more to the demographics. I'm not familiar with Denver Is it mostly families, or is, what's the senior population like? Or? Um, I don't have any specifics on that, but it is mostly families, and I think the majority white. They have an aging population though, so that's why they're focusing on senior housing. They've, um, they've had a few, I know, I'm familiar with you, and they had like three or four big housing, senior housing developments, so um, they are focusing on, on the aging population. Okay, thank you.